the next speaker from this session is a remarkable man. He is Renante Romillo, and he'll be talking about saving the dugongs. So he is the program coordinator of community-centered conservation in the Philippines, as well as being a Nacho explorer and a member of the IUCN Serena Specialist Group. Uh, come on in. How's it going? How's it going? Thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us today. Hello, Eleanor. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, it's uh, already evening here in the Philippines, so good evening from the Philippines. Oh, wow. Um, do you want to share your screen? Yes. Okay. Oh, we'll see. I'm so excited yeah. to hear your talk. I absolutely love dugong, so I'm really excited to, to hear about this. So you can see now the... Uh, not yet, not yet. Hang on. Nope, I can't quite see it. Try sharing again. Uh, okay. No, nope, still not seeing it. I'm sure it'll come through in a minute. Uh, I think you have to hit the, the share screen uh, at the bottom with a little cross in it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Brilliant. Okay. Okay. So, Great. Great. good evening. So, I will be sharing the the uh, uh, lessons and experience of uh, C3 Philippines in establishment of community-driven dugong conservation area in one of the islands in Busuanga, Palawan, Philippines. So, by the way, uh, community-centered conservation is a non-government NGO. Uh, based in Palawan, Philippines. So, um, Kalawit Island is located in the northern part of Busuanga Island. So, it's also part of the Calamianes Island groups in Palawan. So, yeah, if you can see at the map, uh, Philippines have composed of many islands. So, we are, uh, our project and our office is located in the small islands of Busuanga, Palawan. And, uh, this Kalawit Island is also part of the ancestral domain of the indigenous people, uh, the Tagbanwas, and the Philippine government awarded the certificate of title in 2010. So we are working with the indigenous people organization in the island, the Norutunan Yang Tagbanwas, Tung Kalawit, my Quezon, managing the area. So these are the people's organization that we work with. And we trained uh, more than 60 Bantay Dugongs or Dugong Guards in the island. And as an introduction, um, not unlike other species or of wildlife, uh, Dugong is um, dug conservation, conserving uh, critically endangered Dugong in the Philippines has always been a challenge, even in getting some funding support or, you know, uh, other, not like other uh, species that very charismatic and can easily, you know, uh, recognized but with this dugong it's not so popular like other species and dugong is also a categorized by IUCN as vulnerable but here in the Philippines uh, due to the decline of the species and uh, escalating threats so it's already classified as critically endangered here in the Philippines so in terms of uh, dugong in Kalawit, uh, the island is a stronghold of the dugong population in the Philippines. The island is composed of dense uh, seagrass areas, and most of the seagrass species present in the islands are prepared species uh, of dugong. So this animal is also pride of the indigenous people of the Tagbanwa. So in terms of our experience in establishment of dugong conservation area in, in the island, so it is, it's a product of cooperation among uh, stakeholders and with the backup of science and traditional ecological knowledge of the indigenous people. So, in, so we started the dugong population and distribution study since 2011 when we started the program in the Philippines. Uh, we started with the, with the dugong sighting monitoring by teachers. I can I, I will explain all these uh, researches and surveys conducted. So we also did the um, both base survey in 2014 and 2015. And since 2017, we are doing simultaneous dugong monitoring or the land-based uh, survey. And in 2019, so we also started uh, the aerial survey using small drones and uh, home range study. So in terms of uh, dugong sighting monitoring by Fisher, so 
it's basically ano um voluntary work with a with a picture so we distributed uh simple and uh, easy to understand dugong sighting forms where the where the fisher can uh, bring it during their fishing fishing time so it's it's, it's easy to ano uh, the, the the fisher will just check when they saw dugong in, in, in during their fishing so the time um and uh the time and 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 the behavior of the dugong they see so at the back of the sighting forms there is also a map where they can pinpoint where did they uh, saw the dugong in in particular fishing ground so and in 2014 from the data that we collected from the simultaneous uh, dugong monitoring that um, were analyzed so we started uh, to do the boat based survey in a uh, uh, priority site so it's um it's a whole day uh, like uh, it's a two kilometer uh, transect that we we monitored or we we we, we record the sightings of dugong um in, in in that particular area and like what i said in 2017 we started the simultaneous dugong monitoring so it's um elevated vantage point in in the island so right now we all, we already have 31 a vantage point in, around the island that that we are using for the land based survey so it's um i know so the, the the platforms are are situated in the elevated portion of the island where our volunteers trained the uh, uh, dugong guards uh, assist us to 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 perform the three day monitoring of the of the dugong in 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 in, in their specific site so in uh, we also started the the drone survey with a part in partnership with Mordok University and National Geographic. So we started the uh, know the 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 study on um, dugong using small drones in the island. So this is one of the example of the dugong captured by our drone during uh, our survey in March. Uh, 2019 so the plan is to continue the the drone survey hopefully this year and uh, with the in partnership with dugong cms under the iki uh, seagrass ecosystem services project and of course we also do a regular seagrass habitat monitoring we always record and um, monitor the the areas or the feeding grounds of the dugong in the island uh, from our studies, there are eight eight species of seagrass that are uh, uh, dominated in the island. So the Talasha, the Simodosea, Syringojum, and uh, of course the Halophila and Halodule are present in the island. And another important things that we are doing is to um, to listen and to um, listen to the to community. So we also involve them in prioritizing uh, dugong hotspot for conservation so we do um key important uh, survey where they 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 uh, share the the sightings of dugong in, in 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 their in their island in the island and of course also the the possible threats or the existing threats in for dugong in 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 the island so the like the fishing threats so we then we we will prioritize the conservation action on the identified hotspot for of dugong and after that so we we always do consultation to the the, the indigenous people uh, community members and elders in the island so it's a it's a long process of community consultation meetings and um of course the negotiation in establishing and protecting protecting certain areas for for dugong so after all these these um, meetings, consultation, presentation of the science uh, of, of of our uh, researches and study. So after um, doing that, so we 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 map and val we validate and demarcate the area on the ground, and um, with the IP resolution passed, and uh, the strategies for for management were also developed with the community. And this is the sample of the IP resolution that uh, passed by the elders to establish the first dugong conservation areas in the Philippines. So some lessons are like the particip participatory and inclusive 
decision making is uh, essential for the identification of dugong conservation areas and uh, it's also important uh, in 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 doing this uh, the combination of scientific surveys and uh, traditional knowledge of the community in, in prioritizing uh, areas for conservation so we also need to consider all the uh, the traditional and cultural aspect of of the community in developing these conservation areas and of course uh, we need to reinforce the management and it should be led by the indigenous people or the community for sustainability and um, for the way forward so we're working now on the development of the dugong conservation area management plan and we're also working with the D department of environment and natural resources and palawan council for sustainable development for the declaration of the area to become a critical habitat for dugong for uh, to elevate it at the national level for protection and we still are uh, doing uh, intensive awareness and uh, education in the island for, on the importance of the dugong conservation area so we still uh, continue participatory research and monitoring of the island so uh, it's a continuous um, research and uh, study in, in other aspects of, of, the, of the Dugong population and the area. So we also promote uh, citizen science like what we are doing now, the, the participation of the trained Dugong volunteers, Bantay Dugong volunteers in doing land-based um, survey. And hopefully the plan is to replicate this uh, initiative to other parts of Palawan, which are, we, we, we already, you know, uh, draw some uh, lessons and experience on this um, dugong conservation areas in in Kalawit Island. So that's also thank you very much uh, to our sponsors and uh, partners. So thank you. Brilliant. Thanks so much for what a brilliant talk. Like what a cool thing to be involved with. Oh my goodness. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and thank you so much for taking the time out. It's obviously a very busy schedule to come and talk to us today. We really, really appreciate it. So, um, I've got some uh, questions. Um, you mentioned the uh, the fisheries and um, the uptake of kind of voluntary surveys by, by yes. fishermen. How, how much kind of uptake was that? Was there some resistance, and kind of how did you get around that, or were they kind of very keen from the get go? Actually, before uh, it's also it's always I uh, know uh, difficult to start. Uh, uh, but with the with the um, with the education and the awareness campaign that we are doing doing from the start of the of the project or or uh, of this effort, so we we really I uh, know invested more on the education side of the program, and we started it, and we we also I uh, know uh, plan and. Um, develop strategic action with the community and with the elders especially that we are working with indigenous people so it's really important to you know, also listen to their you know, uh, perspective and a recommendation on how we we can do better uh, our program and considering that dugong is um is also part or culturally culturally you know, um uh part of the indigenous people in that island so and then little by little so understanding the science so we explained that dugong is um, uh, only uh, like they, they before they are thinking that dugong is uh, are like other with the other animals that that also eat other other than seagrass so when 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 they discovered or when we they learned that that seagrass is only uh, feeding on the seagrass areas in their island so they they appreciate the the seagrass areas in their island so so that's where uh, we started so we started education and they appreciate it then they they participated in the action that we are doing so it's not only c3 but it's a collective um effort and work with the with the leaders and elders of the the community i think that's so important what you're what you're doing kind of you know making sure there's kind of a real community involvement in a kind of a very real way which is has been a lot of people talking a lot recently in conservation about how important this is for kind of long-term change oh, what advice would you give because your your organization often 
obviously it works with this really well. What advice would you give to other conservationists or NGOs who are kind of keen to get this, you know, better um, engagement with local communities, but are perhaps not sure how to do it? What kind of advice would you give to them? Uh, yeah, so first advice that I can give is to listen with the community. So because they are already you know, um, living with, with, their, with their environment since, like especially in, in, in indigenous people's community. So they're already working uh, with the environment since time immemorial. So they know better, just they, may, maybe they are just busy and you know, doing other things. But if you, you, if you will, will find time to listen, to, you know, to communicate with them and... Um, and then you will, you know, you will, you know, understand that all this, um, I mean, the science that we are doing will really complement with the indigenous knowledge of the community. So it is, it is very important to, you know, um, to, you know, bridge that gap of the science and the traditional ecological knowledge of the communities, especially if we are working on conservation. And uh, second is to work with the national government and the government because. Uh, it's also part of the sustainability that they are the proper authorities who are mandated really to protect the the environment. So we are um, really need to work with them and um, also uh, uh, build strong partnership with the other stakeholders, not only with the government but but with with also with the other private invest uh, private sector with the uh, with the academic institution and other institution who are working in, in the same area or in the same site. Yeah, I think that's, that's some of the recommendation. Yeah. That's really good advice. And just out of curiosity, like with such a big project, there must have been some challenges that came up along the way. What, what are kind of challenges did you come across with this project? Actually, the first challenge is the funding. Like what I said, Dugong is sometimes it's really difficult to get uh, support for, for the species. So. We started in 2011 to 2014, uh, like a voluntary work. So, yeah, that's one challenge. And now, uh, like 2018, 2019. So we started, and we we already recognize. Uh, I mean, our work in in Dugong conservation. So it's now become um, easier to get uh, support. So, but before the the challenge is really to work, to uh, to get some funding, especially that the technology now is you know. It's uh, evolving very fast. So before we're just uh, relying on the on the voluntary reports of the fishers, but now we also need to try the technology like the drone. So it's, re it's really expensive um, equipment. So and of course other um, other uh, skills that we need that the team needs, like the, on the mapping, on analyzing all these data from the drones and other. Um, and other new uh, technology in research. Uh, so, so these are um, some of the challenges. And of course, before, um, not only in, uh, in, but not in 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 Kalawit Island, but basically on the in 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 the area that C3 works. So it's also a challenge to um, to uh, no, um, to go uh, like. Uh, because we are working on a very remote island, so the transportation is very, you know, uh, hard. Like uh, it's difficult to go to one community and from another. So it's always a challenge for us to, to, you know, um, become always visible and like uh, we need to uh, ensure that the community that we are still, you know, always doing uh, this work for, for them. So sometimes it especially during the typhoon season here in the Philippines. So sometimes we cannot visit some of the islands that we are working with. So it's also a problem in the data collection, um, you know, to, to fully uh, understand and to get a better uh, data on, on our research. So that these are some of the challenges. Oh, are you still there? Oh, yeah, you're still there. Yeah, I always think that's one of the things with data collection. You know, you come up with this really great plan, and then suddenly the weather is terrible. The the the, the connections don't work, yeah. and, and suddenly it's it's an absolute pain. And um, oh yes, I've been there. Um, but um, yes, I, yes, and is hmm. yeah. And yeah, go on, go on. For the no, like now, 
yeah so like now we're using you know, android phones and the community also need to train to to this technology so it's also a challenge for us um train the community with this technology but it's also important for them to appreciate and these new things yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think that, that that's great that, you know, providing all that training is, is really great. I was also so excited to hear that you're using drones because I feel like this is the kind of new thing in, in conservation. You know, it's kind of becoming more and more used. Like, is there anything in particular that you want to see if you can capture on drone any behaviors or, or anything in particular that you're hoping that drones will be able to kind of give you more information on? Yeah, actually, I know for this uh, Nat Geo project, so my um my objective is to i uh, know to document the the sighting areas or the um the distribution of the dugong around the island yeah but you're right so this year we're planning also because in the island there is um dugong watching activities and which uh, the community allows tourists to swim with the dugong with the, uh, of course we're following uh, proper protocols and guidelines but we also need to i uh, know um uh, uh, to see the the behavior of the dugong during the interaction, and of course the the behavior of the tourists while they are uh, swimming with the dugong. So uh, I'm planning to use the the drone uh, to document this behavior, and um, I'm, we were working with the uh, Mordok University on this and to to use this um, new technology on uh, documenting the behavior of dugong. Actually, we already captured some of the. You know, uh, dugong behavior using drones like on the feeding uh, feeding habits of, of, of the dugong in, in particular area in the island. Yeah, so I think this is the new uh, no, um, new technology that we can use uh, to in in wildlife conservation. So yeah, we need to explore yeah. more and other technologies so that can help us to to make our conservation work more effective and sustain yeah. yeah and I, I think that's 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 such an interesting question looking at the kind of human animal interactions and about how we can do that in a kind yes. of a, a safe way I think that's such a such an important uh, important thing to be to be looking at um, I really I really hope to, to see, see your research coming out about that soon yeah um, are you I, yeah when, when do you think you're going to be I know that's a very difficult question to ask but but when do you think we're going to be able to read about it <laughs> Actually, we're uh, we're in the planning stage right now with the with the with the other expert in in in, in Mordok University. Hopefully, maybe next year we have something to you know, to share again on on this study. So on the next global biodiversity festival, <laughs> maybe we can share about this and new developments on dugong uh, conservation using this um, drone technology. Yeah. So so I hope you you. <laughs> yeah so so everybody listening i hope you can uh, make that note in your diary this time next year you can come back for part two um <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, so of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so, so so just one more question and i'm always really curious to ask this because a lot of the people like listening to these talks are going to be people who are kind of young conservationists they're students they're interested in becoming conservationists and and doing what you do what advice would you give kind of young conservationists who are listening today yeah so first appreciate everything around you like the all the living things around you and find the, your passion within this environment so start um to to read or watch uh, uh like na like national geographic uh, movies or fields so that can help you to educate and learn more about wildlife, not only by the flora and fauna of your, especially of your, of your community. Start with your community, and then, um, yeah. So because we need the more conservationists to to save the the planet. So yeah, appreciate and learn, and uh, it's a I know, it's a interesting thing to I know, to work with wildlife and with with the with the with the other uh, species around us yeah that's very good advice and a really nice note to end on so thank you so much for coming and speaking to you to us today that's been absolutely fascinating and uh have have a brilliant rest of your afternoon thank you so much thank you so much for coming thank and speaking you, to Eleanor. us oh, yeah. oh, bye. Bye.